will come back. We are looking at this way that conceptual dependency represents facts and we have seen that there is some similarity in the way in which we construct semantic nets or knowledge graphs and so on. But our focus on conceptual dependency was the choice of predicates. So, let us start moving towards that. If we said that John took a book, then the man took a book, then the man is the agent, the act is take, the object of the act is book and this P stands for this happened in the past, that the event happened in the past. But he must have taken the book from someone. So, we expect that there is some missing information and conceptual dependency has predefined dependencies which create slots, which in some sense create the expectations of something will fill the slot. So, he must have taken the book from someone and there is this recipient uh, dependency that we had talked about, spoken about earlier and uh, there is an empty slot which we can expect we will be able to fill with something else that we have. We have taken the linguistic verb take here, but we will move away from that. This recipient stock is like an explicit case marker like I have, might have mentioned earlier that uh, in our grammars, in the Panini grammar, we have Karak uh, uh, these things, so Karta Ne and Karam Ko and so on, which tell you as to what is the role that an element plays in the larger sentence, which may be an event. So, conceptual cases are predictive mechanisms, they create slots that need to be filled up. The conceptualization is incomplete till they have been filled. So, dialogues are often sustained by the process of filling up empty slots. So, you could see that some of the questions that Margie was asking was based on trying to fill some empty slot. So, these are the cases that we can talk about. The objective case that we have seen, objective dependency. The directive case, we can imagine you are going from one location to another location. The recipient case, we have seen that a book is given by one individual to another individual. We will also see the instrument case uh, in which there is an action, there is a conceptualization which is instrumental to the main conceptualization. We will see quite a few examples. So, we said the man took a book and now we are saying I gave the man a book. Now, you can see that conceptually the representation is very similar. The structure is same, it is just that the fillers are different essentially. For one thing, the actor has changed from the man to I and this slot has been filled in by saying that I the book was from me to that person. So, conceptually giving and taking involved the transfer of something only the actor is different. So, they we can talk about an act called trans and we will refine this into different kinds of trans to start with, but trans is kind of short for transfer. The man took a book and I gave the man book are very similar in nature except that the actor is different and this recipient from the slot is, is different essentially. Now, we have replaced in both the sentences give and take by one 
action which is trans, which stands for transfer. So, let us look at this uh, sentence, John grew the plants with fertilizer. There are two events which are happening. One is that the plants are growing, some kind of state change event is happening. And John is doing something and he is doing something with the fertilizer. Now, linguistically, fertilizer is the instrument in the sentence. John grew the plants with fertilizer. But conceptually, it is the object of some act. So, there are two events. On the top is a state change event. The plants are going from size x to size x plus y. So, you can see I said that this whole thing comes from folk psychology and this is how we in some sense in a qualitative fashion represent uh, states essentially. So, this x plus y represents the fact that the plants are growing. Also, conceptually, we know that John has done something, he is doing something. I mean, there is some action, but we do not know what that action is. I mean, we can guess what that action is, but if we do not know what that action is, we can just write do, which is a short form for there exists. An action. There exists A, well, A is an act, action or something like that. That there is some action that John did. Now, there is a causal connection between what John is doing and the fertilizers growing. So, John did something with the fertilizer, we still have not specified what he has done, which caused the plants to increase in size. So, the physical state of the plants went from some x to x plus y and this whole thing was intentional. John did this intentionally essentially, that he wanted to grow the plants and therefore, he did something with the fertilizers. And all this happened in the past. So, this P stands for past. He grew the plants with the fertilizer. It could be something like this that he transferred the fertilizer from a bag to the ground in which the plants are growing essentially. So, again you can see that our level of understanding would depend upon our world knowledge. So, that is the key thing that I want to keep emphasizing. You cannot just look at a sentence and somehow make sense of it essentially. You have to know the meanings of those words and how they relate to the world that you are talking about. So, let us look at the set of actions that Shank introduced. Uh, as I said, they were at two different times either a set of 11 actions or a set of 14 actions. Some of them had got compressed into one, maybe we will see what they were. In CD theory, these are the actions. So, trans itself is not an action, but it could be A trans or as we will see P trans or even M trans. So, A trans is the abstract transfer of position or control or ownership. So, when we want to model words like give, take, buy, we will use A trans. If I give you a book, then I have given you possession of the book. So, A trans is the action that I am doing. P trans stands for physical transfer, transfer of physical location of an object. So, anything which is moving around uh, can be modeled using P trans. Propel is the application of physical force to an object, regardless of whether the object is P trans or not. So, I may push against a wall or a rock or something. I am still doing the act of propel essentially, whether as a result of which whether it moves or not is a secondary matter. So, anything push, pull, throw, kick will have propel as part of them. Move 
the move of a body part by an animal by a sentient being the move of a body part of an animal by that animal essentially so it's like moving yourself it's often an instrumental act so for example move foot would be the instrument in kick so if i kick the football then i did it by moving my foot grasp as the name suggests the grasping of an object by an actor verbs like grab let go and so on throw involve grasp so they don't have a separate word for ungrasp then in some sense they say that in the future you stop grasping or something like that ingest is all forms of input that you can take expel is all forms of output m trans is mental transfer the transfer of mental information between animals or within an animal so they modeled uh, as i said this is all folk psychology uh, memory into partitions so there was the conscious processor called cp there was a long term memory called ltm then there were other memories there was an immediate memory im then there was a short term memory and so on so they model as if you know our heads are partitioned into different kinds of memory long term memory as the name suggests would store information for the long term conscious processor would be just processing information and not storing it so if you want to use a word like tell then you are saying m trans between people essentially if you want to you ex express c then it is m trans from eyes to the conscious processor if you want to express remember it is m trans from the long term memory to the conscious processor and so on so it, it's as if you are moving around formulas in your head essentially or representations in your head m build was to build a new conceptualization so to construct by an animal of new information from old information so anything you want to say decide conclude imagine consider deduce for example could be used using m build speak the action of producing sounds not just words but sounds humans often use it as an instrument of m trans so anything you want to say say play music per scream would involve speak and attend so attend was actually a combination of some of the other things that they had for using listening or seeing and so on so attend basically says the action of at attending or focusing a sense organ towards a stimulus of some kind it's also an instrument act for m trans so when you want to say see it is m trans from cp to the i to to cp from the i by the instrument act of attending the i to the object so if i am looking at the camera then the instrumental act is attend then that i am attending my i to the camera essentially. so you can likewise attend ear and so on if you are listening so we talked about the instrumental case so let's look at that john ate ice cream with a spoon so linguistically the spoon is the instrument by which john ate essentially it's a instrument with which john ate conceptual level the act of eating is enabled by an instrumental act that uses a spoon as an object so we are doing something with the spoon because spoon is the object of our action and that is an instrumental act for eating 
So you are doing something with the spoon as a as a result of which you end up eating the ice cream. So John ate ice cream with a spoon. Okay, so this is a repeat slide, except for the fact that some more detail has been put in. Instead of do, we have this entire structure here, which so we first said that John ate the ice cream by using the instrumental of doing something with the spoon. Now we are saying that he p trans the spoon, p trans object spoon, and the spoon contained the ice cream and he the recipient of the p trans act was from the ice cream to the mouth and the mouth as possessed by john so if we know what it means to eat with a spoon then this would possibly be our internal representation for the same So, every act can have an instrumental act. For example, John ingested the ice cream by p transferring the spoon towards the mouth, which he did by grasping the spoon and then moving his hand by flexing his muscles, by thinking about flexing his muscles, and so on, essentially. So, when we started on the course, we had said that you know we cannot model the world at the level at which it exists which is at the level of fundamental particles interacting with them in some way. We always abstract away at some level which is cognitively suitable for us essentially. And this comes from folk psychology. So, obviously, you can truncate the level of instrument acts to the level that which you are comfortable with. So, we truncate our causal reasoning and instrumental case specification at a granularity suited to our task. In any domain that we build a conceptual representation system for, we will have to choose an appropriate level of primitive actions. So, I keep repeating this fact that you know the conceptual dependency illustrates what kind of semantic representations you can create to make sense of language. The CD theory is aimed for everyday actions, but you can always define a set of actions specific to a particular domain. Okay, so we will take this up further uh, in the next video.